Hi there, folks, ladies and gentlemen, this is Westbound for Westbound Music. I thought I'd do something a little different today, which is kind of a short glance over the George Duke Soul Treasures Library by Native Instruments, just a little brief intro. And uh, then it's uh, another part, which is a songwriting workshop. Uh, I actually used this library to get out of a kind of a writer's block and um, use some of the ideas provided in this library to get me there. So uh, let's take a brief look here at this library really quick. You're not going to believe this. This is actually recorded in the studio of none other than the great and unfortunately late George Duke, a giant in jazz, an iconic pianist, composer, producer, avid performer. He's a leader. He has a, a catalog of his own recordings. I'm going to put some links in the description below so you get an idea. He's, he's a giant in music history. Let's put it that way. So, okay. Let's uh, briefly look at this uh, library here, which is um, a number of array of phrases that he recorded along with his uh, longtime audio engineer, Eric Zobler. And here's a quick start guide, which gives you a little bit of intro for its, the most important key switches and mouse and uh, you know functions here. And uh, the idea is that if you press a key, even if you don't play an instrument, you get to have all these wonderful phrases on the press at the press of one key only. So if I press a key here, which is C3, it runs through these slices that you can see here. Let me check whether we can see that. Yeah, we see that, okay. It's kind of a lot to keep to monitor here. So it runs three slices, and then if I press any of the left red keys here, it runs them through different effects chain or through the effects chain with uh, different configurations. And you can see them here in this left uh, segment where it says effects chain. And then watch this little drop down menu as I press the key switches. Chorus and cab, cabinet, cabinet and rotator, or rotation, uh, like a Leslie. That's the Leslie, rotator and flange, cabinet and flange, flanger, and so on and so forth. And then also if uh, I press any of the green keys, we go from the root key of F2, which you see here in the middle section where it says tuning, uh, it goes down a few steps. Like for example, we start on F2 again. So this C is much better, or in this case, this is G, root key G. So we get to uh, run the gamut of um, functional harmonies, I think is what it's called. Uh, any of the positions in, in the tonal center, you get to have them by the press of one key. So actually you get to be a a full pianist, you get to be George Duke in a manner of speaking with just using two fingers and a piece of software provided by Native Instruments. What else we got here? Um, volume, you get to adjust the volume of each of these slices different um, uh, individually if you needed to. For example, if you wanted to have some parts stand out more pronounced, then you could have those at 100% and the other ones just you know, dragging down a notch here or uh, with the Alt key, it does it for all together. See, if I press the Alt key. Then attack, you get to adjust the attack for each of these slices. Stretch, I haven't looked into that, I would have to check it out, but we're not uh, going too deeply into that. Uh, what else we got? Oh yeah, um, with the mod wheel, I get to adjust the filtering of this whole thing. So let's uh, sample some of those phrases. This one here is called Mellow, which is kind of a regular pop-ish, R&B-ish pop track. But there's plenty more. I marked some with these favorite asterisk. Yeah, uh, we're talking. Mellow Desk again. What else? Oh yeah, all right. Let's hear it, George. Grand piano. Hmm, nice. Beautiful. 
All right, funky. Oh man, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta love this. This is George Duke playing for you, folks. All right, amazing. Pillow talk. I guess we get the idea what that is about. Vibe with me, yeah. I'll do, Mr. Duke. I'll do. get to use all these phrases for your own composition if you have a license then you actually can use them isn't that great you get to have George Duke sit in with your project I mean how great can it get I can't think of anything better so okay but since we're all grown uh, mature composer artists we want to know what's going on here <laughs> Let's bring up the piano here and check it out. Um, I think this is what's going on. I think I got the chords right. So this is G major seven, A minor seven, B natural minor seven, C major 7 and then E over F sharp or G flat and then C over F major uh, over F so of course we need different parts to it so this let's consider this the chorus or the main part the main theme or a part if we talk in jazz uh, terminology and then the B part or the verse uh, I came up with this here this Got E minor seven, A minor seven, B natural minor seven, C major seven, again, and then A over B natural. Okay, so that's the verse part, and then we come to the bridge, which sounds something like that. seven C over D then D over E with a little melody D over E C over D B natural minor seven A minor seven and then and this is different so it's a um, F minor seven with an added eleventh and then D over E again and C over F so this is uh, part of the chorus so we lead into into the chorus back into the chorus and the C over F is uh, the last one in the chorus so the first one in the outro of the bridge is the first one is the last one in the chorus again so it picks up where we kind of left off so I think the important bit here is at least that's what I'm following is uh, you want to have a little bit of repetition in order to uh, identify the parts of the song but not keeping it uh, you know the same all over again and I think the, the phrase that stuck with me was uh, expressed by Quincy Jones at some point in an interview you want to charm the listeners ears in order to keep their focus and attention I took stock off that and try to bring in little variations here and there which is why we went to the F minor 11th instead of you know the same chord all over so this is the chord progression basically of course this is not a finished song we will have to have other parts to that but just to give you an idea so what else we got we, of course we need drums and uh for that you know for sketching and composing drummer is really it's a heaven sent it's a godsend 
This is just the thing I've been waiting for for all my life, you know. So this is much quicker now with Drummer. And uh, for sketching, I'm just using the stereo track here uh, in Drummer. Of course, you have the producer kits. I have a different video up uh, on the producer kits, which I'm going to also link in the description. Um, so we have different drummers here for different styles and genres. This is kind of the, you see this here, rock alternatives. I went with songwriter here because we have kind of a popish groove track. There's R&B, electronic, hip hop, percussion, and so on. Percussion is kind of Latin uh, informed. So this one here worked well for me, Darcy pop songwriter. Then uh, uh, on the left side here, I have the sunset kit, which is the kit that I'm using. That's the drum kit, and uh, of course we get to have different parts of the kit, different, uh, you know, get to change around and use some other uh, instruments. And I think I'm meant to, I uh, kind of tuned up the cymbals to make them sound a little bit more uh, fresh and, and, you know, interesting. So there's that. Of course, for the finished production, what you want to use is the producer kits here at the very bottom. But the producer kits basically let you uh, create a summing stack with uh, individual individual tracks for each of the kit parts, like uh, for the bass drum, for the snare, uh, for the hi-hats, and so on. And um, this is what you want, specified drum mix. All right, so let's listen back to that and see whether it works together with the chord progression. I think that does the job, doesn't it? Does the trick, as they say. And of course, we need a bass. And uh, I chose just the regular fretless bass here, which is also a uh, stock instrument or stock preset pre installed with uh, Logic. And I really like this bass because of its natural sound. It really comes very close to a, to a real uh, bass player. And so let's uh, listen to that real quick here in isolation. <laughs> I think you can hear the articulations, you know, the short stops. It's almost like a slapped sound. Really expressive. And if you hit it harder, like for example, like that, you get to have this little uh, bend or slide. And you also hear the fret noises and, and I mean the string noises from you know gliding across the fretboard and this and that. So I think it really sounds very close to a to a real uh, musician, and that's what I'll, I always go for. I want to you know for this kind of genre, I wanted or actually any kind of genre, I wanted to sound like real musicians playing together. And so this one comes close. I I hope. I mean, <laughs> you can of course rip me apart in the comments if you think I'm I'm babbling and messing it up here. Uh, and one more important thing is um, the fretless bass um, is the groove track. So what's the groove track? The groove track for any MIDI track is basically the rhythmic center, which kind of sets the pace for all the other instruments uh, that then follow along. And uh, why not the drums? Well, usually, okay, the drum would be like the main focal rhythmic center. However, um, in setting the groove, the, the bass for the groove track, you get to have the drums follow the bass. And what I think I hear is more musical sounding fills because drummer basically has an AI, artificial intelligence built into it, which uh, kind of analyzes the parts and the, and the project. And then, you know, no, whenever the parts change, like in the arrangement, as I said earlier, it kind of... Uh, creates fills and stuff like that and you get to control it with these dials here you know how many fills and whether they should be swung or not 18th note feel 16th notes feel and so on and so forth push pull ghost notes whether this hi-hat is going to be busy or not closed or open things of that nature okay let's listen to this together real quick here <laughs> Yeah. 
and so on. Did you hear this little uh, vibrato tremolo here? And it's just, I, th I really think this is a great preset. Uh, so, okay. All right, uh, all three together without my babbling, just, you know, just music, a couple of tracks. We heard the chorus already. Let's go to the bridge and see how that sounds. <laughs> So this is basically it. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please consider subscribing to my channel, ding the bell to get notified about new content, uh, leave a comment uh, if you have suggestions, ideas, or questions, um, and come back to see me. I hope this was inspiring to you. This is the George Duke Soul Treasures Library by Native Instruments. Kind of old school, but it's hip to me. That's why I wanted to shine a light on it. And hope you like it too. And if you did, Please check out their website, go there, purchase the package, and come back. And see you again. Bye-bye. This is Westbound for Westbound Music. See you soon. Bye.